Okay, we've spent some time talking about aliphatic hydrocarbons. Now let's look at aromatic hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons that are cyclic, they're in a circle and have what's called resonance. <laughs> cyclic means closed chain, resonance means double bonds move throughout the molecule. First of these molecules is called benzene. Now, Ben doesn't own it, but there was a guy named Auguste Kekulé who was trying to figure out how you could bond six carbons and six hydrogens together and make it work. Here's the deal. You can't do it straight, but you can do it in a closed loop, like this. Six carbons arranged like that, and six hydrogens. Now, to make it so that each carbon has four bonds, we've got to throw double bonds here. Now, because there's double bonds, that means that this is supposed to undergo addition when we react it with chlorine. If I react this with Cl2, this double bond should break, or one of these double bonds should break, and the Cl2 should add to either side. But you want to know something? When you react this with Cl2, the most common isomer is where you get a chlorine here and a chlorine over there. This is known as substitution. So what the heck is going on here? The solution to the problem is this. At one instant, the double bond is located here, here, and here. At the next instant, the double bond is located here, here, and here. Here, here, and here. They shimmy back and forth. They vibrate back and forth. Like a tuning fork. That's why it's called resonance. This double bond moves, for lack of a better term. And it kind of makes the chlorines all dizzy, and they're like, I am totally not going to bond there. I'll just replace some hydrogens because they're just sitting still. So a couple of popular ways of drawing benzene, because this is just a mousse of a molecule to draw, is to draw a six-sided object where at each angle there's a carbon, and of course the hydrogens are assumed, and we can actually draw that, that, and that to represent the double bond, the double bond, and the double bond. Or if you want to show it's actually resonating, we can draw benzene like this with a circle in the middle to show that that double bond is spinning around. Benzene is an absolutely amazing nonpolar solvent because it's absolutely loaded with lines of symmetry, but it's also incredibly dangerous and poisonous. So we use something called polyene. Toluene is used in plastic model cement for gluing polystyrene plastic parts together. It's benzene that has methyl, a single carbon, attached to it with three hydrogens. Methyl benzene. This is also extremely dangerous and flammable, but not as bad as benzene. Phenol, which is used in cough syrup as a cough suppressant. Phenol contains benzene and OH. It's called benzyl alcohol or phenyl alcohol. Sometimes the benzene ring is also known as a phenyl group when it's attached as a dingly dangly dangling off the dongle. Except in this case, actually, the OH is the dingly dangly dangling off the benzene dongle. Paradichlorobenzene, which is used as mothballs. Benzene with chlorines at the one and two, three, four position. Para means that the chlorines are on opposite ends of the benzene molecule. There's also ortho and meta, but that's for your organic chemistry course, and we're not going to do it right now. Naphthalene is also used for mothballs. It's basically two benzene molecules that are stuck together to make Elton John sunglasses. My personal favorite molecule, 246-trinitrotoluene. Toluene, of course, benzene with a methyl on it, like we saw before. A nitro group is an NO2 group. Two, four, six, right, because the nitrogen's bonded to the chain. 246-trinitrotoluene, also known as TNT. Boom! And finally, everybody's favorite aromatic molecule, phenol thaline. Look, there's a phenol right there, there's another phenol right there, and this is your phthalate group right there, phenol thaline, the indicator that turns pink in a base.